day at a time and growing with you and, and uh, getting through this thing together. Uh, Lord, uh, you've always been faithful and true, and Lord, you're faithful and true to the men in the Bible. And Lord, you give us example after example. Help us to see those. Father, again, thank you for your many blessings, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Genesis 25. We were down to verse 32, and I started hitting a couple things. And uh, uh, it, it, verse 32 says, And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And uh, you, don't, you never have to worry about getting to a place where you think you're going to die. Uh, you can get by with, uh, with uh, just making it a little bit further. But he walks in, just says a couple things off the cuff. And he messes up the rest of his life by what he just did. Uh, and he says, uh, and what profit shall this birthright do to me? Uh, I talked about some things last week. Uh, the decision that, uh, go to Hebrews chapter, he, he, Hebrews chapter 12. He made a decision that uh, sometimes we do. I like Bob Jones Sr. Bob Jones Sr. said, uh, uh, never sacrifice uh, on the altar of the immediate, the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Uh, just because you think you need something right now, don't, don't worry about that. You don't really need it right now. 12, 12, 16. If you needed it right now, believe me, God would supply your need. Uh, verse 15 says, looking diligently, 12, 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. So if you ever get bitter, man, there's a, there's a good one right there. Bitterness will destroy you. Uh, it will, it will eat your lunch. Uh, I don't, I don't know what bitterness, uh, actually, I know what it is, but it's a, it's all, it's like, he says, he's, he's, he's like a canker worm, man. I mean, that thing gets in there and it digs in deep and, uh, it's hard to get out. I've been bitter over a couple things over my life. And when, when I started seeing that thing coming on, I just let go. I just let go of it because bitterness will get you, man. And then pretty soon your actions will be dictated by your bitterness. So then we get into verse 16. It says, lest there be any fornicate, uh, fornicator or profane person as Esau. So he starts calling Esau a couple names, and this is the writer here, uh, Paul's writing this thing, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. Now, Esau's been dead. Uh, if I take my Bible and go back there, uh, 1800 B.C., 1804 B.C. is where we're at, 1800 B.C., uh, 2,000 years on 3,800 years. He's regretted that move. And there's nothing you can do about it, because the next verse says, for ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited a blessing, he was rejected, for, uh, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with prayers, uh, with tears. So sometimes you can't get back what, what you do. You may mess up. The Lord will forgive a lot of stuff. I mean, he'll forgive a ton of stuff. Uh, but there's some things that, like right there, when God says this is something for your future and you reject it, uh, that's like salvation. There's no, no answer for salvation. Uh, people say, oh, well, I'll wait. Till, no, there ain't no. I'll go to hell and we'll party. Down. There ain't no partying in hell. There ain't none of that stuff. Uh, when you reject God, you're, you're saying, what you're saying is instead of the grace and mercy that God has to offer, I want the wrath and, and anger of God. Uh, I'm, makes no sense to me. Uh, I, was, I was sitting there watching the Hubble te Telescope. Uh, I like some, some of these space documentaries because... You see, what is that guy who was in the wheelchair? The, the scientist. Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins. I was sitting there, he was on this thing, and he's sitting there, and his teeth are hanging out the front. Like, and I'm not making fun of him, that's just the way he is. He's in his wheelchair. He's got his talking little computer. I am so glad that we put on space and all in that. I'm like, here's a guy died wanting right to help. Chances are that's probably where he's at today. And they're sitting there looking in space. And they, the, they put the initial space, the Hubble telescope up, I forget what year it was, but they put it up there with a bad mirror in it. They knew the mirror was bad. Well, the company who made the mirror knew it was bad. Uh, when they put the whole thing together, billions and billions and billions of dollars worth of effort, all these space shuttle shots and everything else to get the thing in space, and they finally get it up there, they turn it on, it's, it's broke. So then they, then they got to get another space shuttle program together to go up there and fix the thing, and they, they said we had to fix it right. Well, no, they had to break it right. They couldn't fix it because you can't fix the mirror because the mirror is the main thing of it. So they had to go in there and break a camera the right way so that it compensated for the broken mirror. So two broken things made the right thing. And it worked. It worked. Now, I'm saying that because they showed this. They said there's an area in space that they found that's just totally black. 
and they figured there wasn't nothing there. So they trained the Hubble te telescope there. And all the effort that they had to put into this telescope, and I've known this over the years, all the stuff they've done, but, uh, but they talking about a wobble. They said the, the, the dime, a dime, if you put a dime in New York City uh, and you went to the top of the, the uh, in Washington, D.C., to the Washington Monument, and you put a dime, the, the, the wobble on that telescope had to be such that if you put a dime on a building in New York City that you could take a laser from the top of the Washington Monument, hit that dime in New York City, but it wasn't just hitting a dime, you had to be on his head on the dime in New York City. That's the kind of technology that it took for that, because the, the thing can't move in space, it has to be fixed. So they hit this black spot, and the first picture they get back in this black spot that they couldn't see anything were millions of universes or galaxies sitting out there that they couldn't even see. And because they upgraded and upgraded and upgraded, now they, they see the stuff further and further and further out. And I'm sitting there going, look, that God just made all that in a moment. They're all these scientists thinking, oh, oh, you know, hey, this billions and billions and billions. It took billions and billions and billions of light years to get. And I said, no. I said, God built all that stuff and he made the light path immediately as he made that stuff. So as soon as you get technology, you're going to make one or two choices. I'm going to choose God. And I tell you, I, I struggle with some of this stuff too sometimes because my mind will start thinking. And I'm like, wait a second, wait a second. Ellie, you're going to die. And when you die, you're going to be out there and you're going to be gone past all this stuff. And you're going to be absent from the body, present with the Lord. Don't let science fool you for a moment. It can't fool you. Uh, I don't care what man can come up with. Man can think up all kinds of stuff, but man can't do what God does. And when I look at that stuff, here's where science will kill you. If you think science technology is, is the thing in your life, you just messed up. Oh, look at that. I've got to take a phone call. It's restricted. If it's restricted, you really don't want to talk to me. So anyways, I should have turned it down. I, that's a wonder. Y'all should kick me out of here for that. Uh, let me turn it down so it don't happen again. All right. But science, science is, this, like this stuff right here. Why do we need that? So that they can interrupt you during a Sunday school class? That's all this stuff is for. But, but you go on and he goes, he made a decision that, that is going to affect his eternity forever. Uh, did Esau go to heaven? I don't know. I, I doubt it. It, it, it. I never seen anything in there where he did the right thing. Uh, but God, God's merciful and gracious and, and long suffering. He loves us. Uh, but chances are he didn't. He tried. He, he gave up a blessing. He gave up a, a possibility to be the one in line. And the Lord already knew what he was going to do. Uh, but it, it, he's called him profane over there. Uh, take your Bible. Look at, let's look at a couple verses. First Corinthians six. Since I already hit that verse. Uh, we'll look at a couple others real quick. For us, why would the Lord put that in the Bible? And then why would Paul? Have you ever noticed that when in the New Testament, when somebody refers to an Old Testament passage, they're bringing it into a realm to where it's going to be for the church. And there's a, there's a lesson for us in that passage. Uh, 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 6. I like this, man. This is a great book. This is, oh, yeah, but as a matter of fact, this is one of my favorite chapters. I remember when I first read this thing, how the Lord just tore me up. You know, we always want to give vengeance as mine, say the Lord. And uh, he tells you that, he tells you that, and he tells you that. Uh, but but uh, verse 8 says, Nay, ye do wrong and defraud, and that your brethren. Know ye not that the unrighteous, uh, wait a minute, let me go over I speak to your shame. Is it in the way that there's yours? Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 seven. Actually, go to five. Because he's sitting there and says, uh, you should go to one. <laughs> Daring you having a matter against another, go to law before the unjust and not before the saints. That's us. Do you not know that the saints shall judge the world? That's us. And if the world shall be judged by you, that's us. Are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? That's us. Know ye not that, uh, know ye not that we shall judge angels? So we're going to put the angels in hell. You don't have to worry about that. They're going. How much more the things that pertain to this life? So we should get to the place where we can make that judgment. If then ye have judgments of things pertaining to this life, uh, set them to judge who are least esteemed in the church. I speak you, to your shame. Is it, uh, it is so that there is not a wise man among you? No, not one that shall be able to judge between his brethren. But brother, go to the law. You know, the, brethren, you got a book sitting in your hand. And it tells you exactly what to do. And all you got to do is do what, it, what, what, you, 
what it says do. Uh, there's no guarantee that, oh man, I like this. I'm going to preach a message this morning, but in, in this message, I just, it's amazing what, what comes up in your, your thumb. The success of a saint, submission, you got to learn how to submit. Service, you got to learn how to serve. Satisfaction, not required. <laughs> there's, you don't have to be happy about it. You should. But you're going to find a lot of times in life that you're going to come to this thing and the initial thing that you do, you will understand exactly what to do. You may not agree with it wholeheartedly. As time goes on, I'm for, I've been in this thing for 43 years, going on 44 years right now. And the things I did probably 43 years ago, I'm finally starting to agree with. Uh, the things that I got to do, I'm, I'm learning right now that God's always right. He's always right. I got I to gotta go with that. Go on with this verse. He says, but brother go with the law with brother and that before the unbelievers. He says, now therefore there is utterly a fault among you because you go to the law one with another. Why do you not rather take the wrong? Why do you not suffer yourselves to be defrauded? Nay, you do wrong and defraud and that your brethren. And, and so many times we're out to get vengeance, vengeance, vengeance. You know how you can tell one thing real quick if somebody's uh, on the Lord's side or not? If they're trying to get what they want. And if they're willing to do whatever they have to do to get what they want, and they don't care what they do to anybody else, that is the wrong attitude to take. I've had preachers tell me I'm wrong. They're wrong. I know what my Bible says. My Bible says, hey, I, I, I'm like, wait a minute, you just tricked me there. That ain't right, man. You start daring and you have a matter against another go to law before the unjust, not before the saints. You're telling me I can judge. You're telling me I can do this. And then I get down to the bottom of this thing after you get me thinking all this stuff and say, well, why don't you just shut your mouth and suffer it? Is it that big a deal? Really? Is, the, is it earth shattering enough that you, I mean, it's that big a deal that, that you have to make yourself known? And we do it before unbelievers? Well, that's what, now you're looking, I'm back to Esau. It says, know ye not that the unrighteous, now watch this, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now he's talking about an inheritance here. He's not talking about salvation. He's talking about an inheritance. Uh, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But ye are washed, and ye are sanctified, and ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. There's a, there is a reward for the Christian out there. And there's a blessing coming for us out there somewhere one of these days in the millennium where we're going to have some stuff that the other people aren't going to get. And you, or, you and I may get it or you may not get it or I may not get it because of the actions that we are down here, that we do down here. Take your Bibles. Go to uh, Galatians 5.21. There's some, there's some teachings in the Bible for the Christian. Esau gave up something that he can never get back. And he never did understand the value of what he gave up. Jacob... Although he's a conniving, instigating person and his mommy got involved in the thing, uh, Jacob was going after the right thing the wrong way. Jacob knew what the value of that was. Jacob's been gone the same amount of time Esau's been gone. And for 3,800 years, Jacob is, has been in that line of blessing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And then come right down to Jacob's 12 sons. Now, Jacob had a lot of stuff to deal with. Overall, I got that. But when you look at the end of that thing, for 3,800 years, Jacob, about 37 anyways, Jacob's been in heaven. Well, he's been in Abraham's bosom. For 2,000 years, he's been in heaven. But, I mean, he's been, now he's sitting in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ right now, not having one bit of problem. And everything that he sees that happened because of the Lord Jesus Christ is right through his bloodline. That's what Esau threw away. And, brethren, we're the same exact thing. We got an opportunity to do something for Jesus Christ and when we sit there and go for this world's garbage and we sacrifice on the altar of the immediate, the permanent, which is eternity, you're wasting your life. You're wasting that thing. I'm telling I'm, and you say, oh, yeah, but you're 65. You already done all that. Yeah, because I was stupid and I had to go learn some hard lessons the hard way. And I finally learned it. Why can't young people? You got the same amount of brain. You got more brains than I got, man. You know, older people, we get dementia. So our minds quit working the right way. Young people's minds, unless you hurt yourself, are working the right way. Why, haven't, why can't we figure that stuff out? If we can build this stuff. Now, I, I, that documentary, I thought that documentary was funny about Hubble Space Telescope because all the people they were in, interviewing uh, were ancient. 
but they show pictures about them in the day when they were working on them. They were all young. So NASA and all the other people, they hire young people. They want young people in there. Why? Because you got fresh minds and, and you think and you do all this other stuff. And you're not tainted like me. You know why they want young people? Because you don't know enough about history to care. So you're willing to let the... Uh, <laughs> I got something on my mind right now that I want to say that I'm just trying to keep from saying it. Because I'm trying to be nice. 521, Galatians 521. says, uh, I go back to 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like of the which I tell you before, as I have told you in times past, that they which do, uh, shall do these uh, shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So there is, there is uh, I've seen Christians live a life of debauchery. Uh, they think they can do whatever they want to do. They, and I, I say all the time there's saved people and there's Christians. But our stubborn, our foolish pride, you got to get to that thing. There's rules and regulations that we must follow. Uh, there's just no way out of it. I'm sorry. Because in the future, yeah, I can do all things. I read that verse over there. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are not profitable for me. So then what is profitable for me? I can do whatever I want. You hear somebody, well, I can do whatever I want. As soon as I hear that, I'm thinking, you poor soul. That's really not what I'm thinking, but that's what, that's, I'm saying that because I'm trying to be nice. But, I mean, you hear that from somebody's mouth, and I'm like, no, you've been taught that in the school system and in the country you live in today. You're, you're not guaranteed anything. Never were guaranteed anything. Never will be guaranteed anything. Uh, the Lord will bless you. I like the way the Lord blesses, man. He blesses like you wouldn't believe. Uh, he, he blesses Abraham. He blesses Isaac. He blesses Jacob. These guys get blessed. I've watched him bless me. If you haven't been blessed, you don't know what you're missing. Uh, take your Bibles. Go to 1 Peter 3, 9. We're looking at a, a future place, inheritance for the Christian. The significance here, Esau lost it. But Paul brings that thing up like you and I have a chance at something that if we don't watch what we're doing, you, know, you get to the judgment seat of Christ, that's in between the millennium and the rapture. When the rapture happens, we're going to go out of here, we're going to get judged at the judgment seat of Christ, and we're going to come back down and rule and reign with him. But you may, man, I tell you what, when I seen that thing with Hubble, you know what I see? I said, Lord, let me have that dark spot right there. I mean, there's hundreds of millions of galaxies right there in that dark spot. And that's just one little spot that they've seen out there. Now, in heaven... If you move something a degree on the earth, that's not hardly anything. You get out in heaven, man. You get out in the universe, and you go out a couple thousand million light years out there if it's really that far out, which I, I wouldn't put it past the Lord that it isn't. I mean, that's a lot of ground. There's a lot of territory out there. You take that in 360 degrees this way, and 360 degrees this way, and 360 degrees this way, and you go 360 degrees all the way around in every different angle that you could possibly go in. What he has there, and he's going to give that to us, and we're going to go out there and rule and reign with him, and you can do whatever you want out there, and you go, poop, I'm out there, poop, I'm back here. And you're going to sacrifice that for a bowl of beans? I mean, you are stupid. I will say that. <laughs> Ignorance isn't even a word that applies to us at that point. Uh, I'm telling you, 1 Peter 3.9. It's crazy, man. We want to fight with each other and waste time when we could be serving Jesus Christ. I don't understand that. I, yeah, I'm, I'm just as guilty as the next person, so don't, don't, don't think I'm sitting there pointing fingers at her. 3.9. 3.9. 3.9. It says, For as many as are under the works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that continueth, not in all the things which are written in the books of the law to do them. So Peter is, it says, but, he, but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Not by his faith, by faith, faith in Jesus Christ. So when we start looking at, at it being Christians, uh, Esau had a, had a future blessing given to him or was about to be handed to him, and he chunked it out the window for a bowl of beans. He went out in the field all day. I was out ch uh, chopping wood. I was telling Steve he's missing it. Steve, I cut up a couple of big trees down over next to his house right across the street. And uh, so he would go over there. All I had to do was supply the log splitter, and, well, that's a blessing, man. Uh, <laughs> if I could do it again, get all them logs back up, or I'd do it again. 
But uh, I've got some logs at my house, and I spent the last couple of days just splitting logs and 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 splitting logs, and I was going to go there somewhere with that. Uh, I'll have to come back on that. For neither, where was I going to go? But test, see what happens when you run a rabbit trail? Well, I'll come back. But anyways, I did split the logs, and it did take your time, and it eats your lunch up. And uh, sometimes the Lord will work things through. He'll, he'll give me this that back in a few minutes. I'll get this. First, go to, uh, go to, go to, go to, go to, got another, got another verse here. Uh, Colossians 3, 4. It'll probably hit me right in the middle of Colossians 3, 4. But you, it's free, brother. Our gifts are free. Uh, our, our, our stuff is free. Everything is free. And the Lord will always make sure you have exactly what you need. But he's, he's getting ready to give you a blessing out there somewhere. And you can't let that thing go to waste and, and for what's down here. And Bob Jones was 100% right on that. Never sacrifice on the altar of the immediate, the permanent on the altar of the immediate. Uh, don't sacrifice God like Esau did. And that's a lesson Esau did. Esau sacrificed that thing and gave it up. Gave it up to his little chump brother, man. And now, now Jacob's in the bloodline. What do you think about that? I think that's a cool thing. Colossians. Colossians 3.24. This is the lesson. I told you I was going to try to get through this chapter today. I, I should be able to. Uh, 324, verse 23. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, uh, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive a reward in the inheritance of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect to persons. I think that's cool, man. I'm like, Lord, I said, you know what I like about you? There is nothing there. I told my kids all the time, I love all my kids. And you can ask them. Uh, they're all here today. Uh, I think they'll be all here. Yeah, there's one, two, three. We got Jonathan there, too. I got, I got nine of them. I got one more available. Uh, but, but they're here. And I, you say, how they, well, no, that's just the Lord. He brought them. He's, they're here. Uh, but I tell them all the same thing. I am not in this church. They are just as equal to the next person. You, and people say, well, yeah, but you let your kids. Yeah, but I let you get away with stuff too, man. If I was that hard and I put my thumb down on everybody like everybody would like me to put my thumb down on everybody, there wouldn't be nobody in this room. So you, got, you know what you do? You let people grow. Well, my kids are just like anybody else's kids. They got to learn some stuff too. But I love every one of them. And I told them all, I said, you're, when you walk through those doors, you're equal to everybody else in this room. I am not going to put my kids, now I'll tell you what, if they get up here and play the piano or they sing and they do whatever, yeah, I'm going to help them. Why? I'll do the same thing for you. I had somebody recently say, well, you only let the certain ones get up there. No, I let the ones who want to get up there get up there. You want to sing? I'm going to tell you how to do this. There's a the young lady up here. She's my daughter, by the way, Elizabeth. Go see her. She'll put you on the list back here. She'd love to put you on the list. You say, I can't sing. She don't care. She just want to fill in a blank. That's it, man. We got piano players. We can make you sound good. If we have to put a bathtub up here, we'll put one up here and have a shower running and everything so you can get in the shower and sing, if that's what it takes. But if you don't sing, I'm going to tell you, here's the key to this whole thing. It's Esau and Jacob. There's a circle. The inner circle was John, James, and Peter. It never said nobody else could get, not get in that circle. It never said anything. You know what you got to do? You got to want to be in the circle. Do you want to be in the circle or on the outside? I always call it low-hanging fruit. Do you want to be low-hanging fruit on the outside? That's the first thing to get picked off. I personally don't like be long, uh, low-hanging fruit. I want to be dead center of it. Put me right in the middle of the thing. Let me sit right there on the front row, back, second row. Uh, I'll sit on the back row. I don't care. Just let me be part of what's going on. I want to be part. Do I got to clean the toilet? Sure, I'll clean the toilet. As a matter of fact, I put the toilets in. Well, with Mike's help, he came in, man, he said, he comes in eating pizza. I'm sure he was eating pizza. I do know he said, cut the hole this way, across this way, and this way, and this way. And he did not cut the hole. We cut the hole. He come in with a little trowel and put the, we had to mix the semen up too, probably. I know how he works, man. He knows how he works too. He's the supervisor. That's the way a supervisor ought to work. And, but the toilets are in. Don't, don't come up to me and say, well, all you want me to do is clean a toilet. You better shut up when you're around me. Definitely don't do that around him or George, either one. George, George you know what George will do? He'll give you the task. 
He's looking for somebody to take something. He, he's been wanting, that's why he's here today. He's looking for something that he can get to give to somebody else. But brother, I'm telling you what, God has got some stuff for us. And, and the gift, and, and you know what, you learn that as time goes on. The church, local church is the best place to learn that. Now, we got a bunch of guys and girls, young ladies taking classes down at uh, TBDI. And what they're doing is they're learning. And they're, then they're sitting in a local church environment and learning how to apply what they're learning. Uh, you could go in, you go to Bible college anywhere. Man, there's PBI, there's, there's several other Bible colleges out there that you can go to. But I'm telling you what, you can sit there and learn and spend three years learning this or spend three years learning that. I mean, it's really up to you. You can do whatever you want to do. I just chose to spend three years learning the Bible. And it did me some good. I was just trying to figure out instead of spending a whole lifetime, I was going to learn it right here. You know what Esau, Esau didn't care. Esau wanted what Esau wanted, and that was it. And when it came time for the blessing, he's already chunked it, and he ain't going to get it back, which is sad. So here he's, he's, he's sitting there saying, we got a blessing coming. Don't throw it away. Galatians 3.24, don't throw it away. Uh, let's look at um, 2 Timothy 2.12. This is the last one, 2 Timothy 2.12. Man, I got, I got something waiting for me. I, I tell everybody all the time, now I don't, and I don't say this, that I don't care about the gift. I do care about it. Uh, I, I'm more concerned about Jesus Christ and working for what I'm going to get there. Uh, I, I, I just want to serve him. That's really what I'm in this thing for is serving him. Uh, a lot of people don't get that. They think, oh, well, I've seen you do. Yeah, yeah, you're going to see me mess up just like the next person messes up, like you mess up. We all mess up. For all of sin and come short of the glory of God, every single one of us. What's your desire? What I want to do is I want to get around as many God's people as I can get. I'm like Mick Jaggers in a way. I told you all that last Sunday. Mick Jaggers, when he was a little puppy, hung around Ike and Tina Turner. And Ike and Tina Turner looked at him and said, that guy ain't ever going to mount to nothing. And he's probably one of the oldest rock stars. Now, I'm not saying go get Rolling Stones tapes. I'm not saying that. I'm saying, but the guy wanted something, and, and that, he did what he did, and he became one of the greatest rock and roll stars on the planet. Well, if you want something from the Lord, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to do the same. Where's your desire at? Esau never had it. Jacob had it. I mean, I got to give Jacob credit, man. At least he had it. Uh, 2 Peter. 2 Peter. Oh, no, 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2.12. I got to hand it to him, man. I'm, I'm right there with him. Uh, if we... Oh, here you go. Oh, you're going to like this. <laughs> man, where do you start? Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, chapter 2, verse... 2 Timothy 2, uh, verse 10. Therefore, I endure all things. This is Paul talking. Greatest Christian ever lived. Therefore, I endure all things for the elect's sake, for you guys. So, you know, if you really want to get close to Jesus Christ, I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to put up with some stuff that other people do. And it's this group right here is the group that you're going to have to do that with. This is the group as you want to. Believe me, if Jesus Christ died by himself on a cross at Calvary. Oh, well, there was people. No, no, no. They all ran. And they were faces in the crowd while he's dying on the cross. But he's there pretty much by himself. Paul's in a jail cell when he dies by himself. And Luke is only with him. Peter's probably hung upside down, they say, on a cross, and, and he died. James got his head cut off. Stephen's in the midst of a bunch of people that are just arguing with him. And Paul's standing there, Saul's standing there with him, uh, holding the cloaks, uh, consenting to his death. So you're not going to find a crowd of Joel Osteen's church, 15,000 people, and everybody in there is going to love Jesus Christ and shoot, shout and holler and hoop and holler and, and praise the Lord and all this other stuff. And that's going to be, that ain't going to be in the end times. In the end times, as it was in the days of Noah, there's going to be seven or eight people gathered together someplace, and they're going to be willing to get on an ark, and everybody else ain't. And you might as well get, get your mind wrap, wrapped around that. There's not going to be no great revival. Can there be a, a, a local revival? Sure, man. You can win souls all day long. That's what you ought to be doing. But for the Lord to get a great revival out there, it just ain't going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I know people say, oh, well, you're, you're running it. No, watch this. Therefore, I endure, endure all things for the elect's sake. Why would the greatest Christian in the world be by himself when he dies? Because all these other guys thought they knew everything. I hate it when somebody comes to me and acts like they know everything. And they may. But are you acting like this and doing that? No, no, I'm not really. Therefore, I endure all things. For the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. It is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. And if we suffer with him, we'll also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. <laughs> if we believe not, yet abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Now, 
uh, there's, there's a level of suffering that you're just going to have to learn how to deal with. And, and the Lord's going to allow things in your life. And if you want to rule with him, you're going to have to learn that you're going to have to suffer with him. And guess what? He's going to put things in your life to make you suffer. Now, he's not going to do it on purpose to make you suffer. Like, hey, I'm going to hit him with a hammer or let a truck run over his foot or something. Uh, Brother Randy was getting out of his car the other day. I said, Beth, Beth, don't hit his foot. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's got his cast on. He's sitting there, and, and uh, that'd, be, uh, that'd be almost comical. Not, not for him, but uh, you, that's, you know, you'd see like an Abbott and Costello where he'd get his foot run over or something. But, uh, but there is things in our lives where things are going to hurt, and people around you are going to hurt you. And it just... You have to learn to make a choice for Jesus Christ. Uh, when you make that choice for Jesus Christ, the world's not going to understand that. They can't. Initially, they may. I remember when I first got saved, uh, they all, I was, my hair was down to here. I was a long-haired hippie. And, and they all thought that, oh, I, I was telling uh, Sister Sarah about that a little while ago. Uh, when I joined the Navy, they thought I was all crazy. They said, there's just no possible way you could ever, ever join the Navy and make it. You, not you, not you. Uh, you're, you're, you hate authority, you hate this, you hate that, you hate this. Uh, you run around, you don't ever get into nothing, you, you can't do it. I thrived there. Oh, man, I thrived. I, thriving ain't even the word for it. I mean, I thrived. Thriving, I mean, I excelled. Uh, I exceedingly excelled. Uh, because they opened up a door for me, and they said, go and do your thing. Uh, I mean, <laughs> that was the Lord. There's no doubt in my mind who did that. The Lord opened me. He walked me right down a path to get me down a place. And allowed me to play for 14 years. That's what he allowed me to do. I got to play. I go into, so I had my Navy hat on the other day because that's the only one I could find. I normally don't wear it because if I do, somebody's going to say, oh, were you in the Navy? And you don't want to do that. <laughs> I'll never get out of the store, man. I never. And sure enough, man, this guy comes up and says, oh, man, thank you for your service. I'm like, no, thank you for putting me there, man. Hey, have you ever heard? <laughs> no, you couldn't have because, you, oh, man, fresh meat, man, fresh meat. They don't know nothing. I got, I got good hours worth of stories I can tell you. <laughs> I mean, it, it's amazing. I mean, it's just one of those things where you, you can't figure somebody out. You can't figure the thing out. There's no possible way you can do that. But if, if this life, if he gives me in that life, this life, that stuff right there, then I'm going to say, man, in the other one, I'm going to get all kinds of things. And it's worth giving this thing up. You know what I realized? The more I tried to be a better ET, the more people hated me. I never tried to make nobody hate me. I just tried to fix everything that was stinking broke. I looked at something broke. You know what I do? This is, this is what I do. And if you think I'd do anything different here, this is, I'd wake up in the morning, and I just went to bed, by the way, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, and I'd wake up at 6.37 and go to work. And I'd work all day long and find all kinds of broken stuff. And all night long, I'd be running parts chits over to the biggest supply station in Norfolk, Virginia, which is in the world, right there in Norfolk, Virginia, in OB. And I'd be hand-walking chits. Now, normally, typically, you'd fill that chit, put it in supply, they'd put it in a computer and shoot out there somewhere. A month or two, you'd get your part. Not me. I ain't waiting. I'm impatient. I've always been impatient. That's just a flaw I have. I would go down there. I worked it out with the suppo and with some friends I had down supply. I liked everybody. When in Rome, do as the Romans. You need people. You can't get nothing done without people. And people who think they're on their own and they do it themselves, you're a liar. People get you where you are and people will help you stay where you're at when you get there. I would go down to supple. They would write the chits out and give it to me. And I could carry those things right over to the supply center and put it. And they had a little waiting room like you go into the, the doctor's office. Then you sit there and your part would come down, unless it was on a fork truck. Then they had to drive the fork truck down there in the middle of the night and drop it off at the, that thing for you. Then you had to get people to put it. That's what I did. So if I had transmitters out, receivers out, if I had radars down, I don't care what it was. Tonight, we're going to get those parts. In the morning, we're going to put them in, and that's going to be back up next. That's what I did for 14 years. That's all I did. Nobody else did that. That's why they love me. Nobody else in the Navy did that. They, they just put the chit in, and they would come in for an inspection. They'd say, oh, this is broke. You failed. No, I've got the part on order. It's been on order for 10 years, but who cares? It's on order. Oh, as long as it's on order, we won't look at that. We only look at the things that are broke that's working. Well, if you, I guess if everything's on order, you don't have nothing that works, then you pass. As long as you got the parts on order. They freaked out when they come on my ship because everything worked and nothing was on order. I'm like, why would you put something on order, man? I don't understand that. And the more I did that, the more I got people mad at me. Now, you would think if an admiral walks on board your ship and says, you got the best ship in the fleet, and it's a... It's a it's a gainer freighter, man, the USS Ponce. It's meant to sink. 
They call it the big fat pig. I mean, it's the, one of the worst ships in the Navy. And he goes, you got the best ship. You got the best ETs and the best ship in the Navy. Everything on your ship works. All the rest of the ships are broke. I can walk on any other ship and fail them in five minutes. I can't find nothing wrong on your ship. You would think they love you. They don't, man. Because you're making everybody else look bad. You know what Jesus Christ did? He made everybody look bad. And he never even tried to look bad. First of all, he built the place that you're living on, that you're talking to him about, and everything else. And then he heals everybody. You come to him and say, my daughter's dead, and he raises her back from the dead. Uh, Mom, you're taking your son out to bury him. And you say, wait, stop, stop, stop. Hey, you, get up, lazy bum. Get off that bear and get to work. And the guy wakes up and says, oh, oh, man, I got to get back to work. Jesus, you couldn't die around him. And he took his time to tell you everything, and they hung him on a cross and killed him. And what we do is we're looking at the immediate, what we want right now. And we're not looking at what the Lord says. Sometimes the Lord says you're going to have to suffer through some things. Uh, I remember I sat on a ship, and I, I mean, I, I wasn't married for nine years out there. And I, I thought, surely I'll never find a wife. Because if I compare what this book says, I mean, I had a list that would go back from, you know that runner when you have a wedding, you run a runner down through here? That was my list. <laughs> I mean, it's like, there's got to be this, got to be this, got to be this, got to be this, got to be this. When I met Beth, I could throw the whole thing away because she met all that. I mean, she, was, she exceeded, far exceeded that. Uh, she liked peanut butter. That's all that mattered. Uh, I'm telling you, brother, I waited nine years, and there was a lot of hurt in there. People said, oh, you don't know. Oh, I do know what it's hurt. I know what hurt. I mean, I stood on the side of the ship, and I'd look four stories up, and everybody would be coming, all the ladies would be coming and taking their husbands home, and I had nothing. And I'm sitting there going, man, I'll never have a wife because I'm out on this ship all the time. This is where the Lord wants me. I know he wants me out here, and I'll never get a wife. I'll never, get, I'll never have family. I'll never have nothing. Okay, I'm, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I said, if that's, if that's what you want, then that's what I'm okay with that. And I wasn't okay with that. It hurt. It hurt. But the Lord says, yeah, but you want to reign with me? <laughs> you want to rule with me, Mike? You're going to have to learn what suffering is. So that way, when it comes, you can deal with it, and you go on through it, and you do the right thing all the way through it until you get to the end. That, that, uh, that initial gratification just don't fly with me, man, because it's always a compromise, just a compromise. He goes on. Uh, in every case, uh, the scriptures are discussing an inheritance on the earth. Uh, you, go, you go to Luke uh, 19, 10 through 27, before the last judgment. Not one reference in the lot refers to heaven, uh, getting to heaven, earning heaven, arriving at heaven, reigning in heaven, a spiritual reign, or a heavenly inheritance. The verses say that the inheritance is an earned reward exactly the opposite of the gift of God, which is eternal life. I got saved in 1980 on a back porch in Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, I got eternal life there. But that's the difference. Uh, Thursday night I'm teaching on, on, in Romans chapter 3. And I got a list of words, and one of them is sanctification. And I got totally sanctified the day I got saved. 100%. However, comma, now I got an old man and a new man. My new man is totally 100% sanctified, but this guy right here is like a stinking, smelly, fleshy thing. And, and I ain't paying no attention to that. That's a flesh. But um, isn't it amazing you get right to where you're talking about something, and somebody does something, you, and it's like it matches. It matches. But this flesh here, I have to say, Paul said, I die daily. You know, the more you would think that as much as that guy wrote and as much as everybody liked that, they just love him to death. And they just didn't. Uh, they got madder, madder, madder. They always get mad at him. Uh, it wasn't just the scribes and Pharisees that mad at him. All the other people were mad at him, too. Uh, so the opposite, opposite. There's opposite there. Uh, the reward is earned by suffering with Christ in this present uh, dispensation. Uh, Romans 8, 17. Oh, yeah, let's go there. I got a couple verses. I got to hit them. I still got 30, 40 seconds, I know. Romans, they're trying to train me. Jerry just hasn't ever been able to do it quite yet. You need to get one of those flashy signs over there, brother. That'll work, man. I, I, did, I got some of these little lights I bought, and I don't know why I bought them, but it's like I got a billion of them. They're little round ones, and, the, and I got a little controller with them, and you can hit them, and they flash. Bella, uh, no, uh, Riley will look at him, ooh, ah, ooh, and you can make it flat, ooh, ah. And I don't know if I'm giving her some, some, something going on in her head uh, that they were worried about her having. I guess there's some uh, autism or something that, that can mess you up really bad, but uh, I don't know. The reward is earned by suffering. Romans 8, 17. 
817. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. No matter what you have to go through here, it's just not worth it. Uh, all th uh, and those who do not suffer with him outside the gate do not reign with him when it comes. So if you want to reign with him, it's, that's what it's going to take. 33, verse 33. And Jacob said, swear to me this day, talking to Esau. Jacob wants him out of his mouth verbally in front of God. See, it's going to be Jacob and Esau sitting here. You need to realize God's watching everything you say. He's watching everything I say. Jacob knows that. Jacob's not a dummy, man. And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swear unto him, and he sold him his birthright. He sold his birthright unto Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau. Jacob's a smart man. He's a Jew. You ain't getting nothing to you. You pay up first. You know, this, this buy now, get now, and pay later, that ain't Jacob. Jacob is, I want first, and then I'll give you the be a bowl of beans and a piece of bread. He was not going to give him nothing until he got what he wanted. And Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. I finished chapter 25. Now, what you do, that was the last verse, right? Okay. What you do, you kill something inside of you. That's called quenching the spirit and, and grieving the Holy Spirit. You quench that thing. What Jacob, what Esau just did right there, he, he out of his mouth, you need to watch what we say. We need to watch it. Out of his mouth, he sold something that was a gift of his from God. And that's what I, that's what I was going to say a little while ago. I don't ever want to make the what the 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 treasures that he's going to give over there mean little or nothing. I do. All I want to do is see him. And I know that he has other things. And, and if he says I need those things, then I need those things. And they're valuable to him. And if they're valuable to him, they're valuable to me. I just don't understand them on this side. I will on that side. But I know the things I do understand on this side, that if they don't please him, I need to let the thing go. I just need to let it go. Esau didn't do that, and what he did was he sold his birthright, and when he said something out of his mouth, it killed something inside him. And if it was ever there, he finished it off right there. And from this point forward, Esau's toast. He's done. Now, brethren, I believe once you're saved, you're always saved. I don't think you can ever lose your salvation. But, boy, you sure can mess up everything on the other side. And I personally just don't want to do that. Uh, I, I've done enough on this side to mess me up. I just want to get on this side. Father.